everyone, and welcome to Eldritch Escape Tokyo. Uh, my name is Churcher, and I will be running this game as a demonstration uh, for how things go. Uh, joining me will be Jake. Hi, everyone. This is Jake, also known as Hero. Uh, I will be taking on the role of Shinji Yamatora, uh, and I am both excited and entirely afraid of this game. Let's get started. As you should be. <laughs> so, for anyone that's not aware... Eldritch Escape Tokyo is set in a modern-day Tokyo where things are very much off. You're playing an ordinary person. You're not a hero running around in giant, like, mecha suits. Uh, you're not a, a person, like, running around doing any sort of, like, superhero state stuff. No, no, no. You're just a normal person. And the world is filled with these monsters known as Eldritches. And these Eldritch are just freely wandering around and killing people, and nobody seems to notice. They don't seem to care about what's happening. It's as if they can't comprehend what's happening. But you do. And that's what's going to make this game very interesting. So, I think we're just going to go ahead and jump right on into it, and say, Shinji, you find yourself in one of the main streets of the city. Massive skyscrapers tower over you on both sides of the street. The street looks like a bomb went off. There's rubble everywhere, and the bodies litter the ground. Strangely, though, when you look at the carnage, you can't even imagine what caused it. Even stranger, some of the things around you are floating in midair, suspended by nothing that you can see. The only way out is a door, floating on its own high above the street level. And around your neck, you wear a key, and it pulses with a warm, just energy across your chest. And in your head, you hear, You are my hunter, and I am your bellwether, and I am here to help you fight the Eldritch. And standing before you, Shinji Yamatora is a averagely built 5 foot 10 male, he wears a graphic t-shirt and some loose khaki shorts, uh, carrying a crowbar, which is rusted to a point on one end. He looks around himself and is quite confused on what's going on here. Um, immediately, once he starts to feel the warm pulsating from the key around his neck, grabs at the outside of his shirt to try to feel what's going on in there. Where? What? What is that? That is the real world. You, my dear hunter, have just died. But I am here to guide you along. I have brought you back so that you may fight. What are you? A ghost? A am I? No, no, you are very much alive. And I am your bellwether. Are you a friend? I am more than a friend. I am a part of you now. Right. Uh, okay. Um, and he'll look around a little bit. Not exactly stunned by the rubble that's around him, but immediately catching his eye is the door that's floating up there. Uh, mind telling me how we get out of here? Well, you will need to climb, and you will need to get to that door. And actually, as you're looking around, some things just kind of immediately click for you. First, the last time you remember, it was daytime. It was a very bright, sunny day in the middle of Tokyo. But now, it's kind of like night. A very well-lit night, for sure, but still nighttime. You look over and you see that the sky itself is dark, and that there are two moons in the sky. One moon is the moon that you are used to. Very large, brightly lit, full moon. But there is a second moon, further away, dimmer. And it's the one that is showing the true light over this area. People 
are walking about as if nothing has happened. They walk over bodies as, and sometimes even kicking them, uh, just unknowingly what's happened. What in the world is going on here? You have awakened. You now see the world as it truly is. This darkening nightmare that encompasses all of humanity. Okay. Well, if I'm awakened, as you say, then I must have some powers, right? <laughs> and I'll try to squeeze my arms tight to my side and take a little lift off to fly. <laughs> no, my dear hunter. This is not that kind of a story. You are still mortal for the moment. And the more that you fight the Eldritch, the more that you will stay mortal. However, if you wish to join me as being a bellwether, then feel free to do nothing else. The Eldritches will eventually find and kill everyone that is awakened. And if you were to join us, that would be fantastic. I would love to have you at my side for the rest of eternity. But I understand and I feel your yearning to remain mortal. So if you wish to do so, you will need to fight the Eldritches. Fight until either they are all dead or you are. Okay. Are those Eldritch you speak of what caused all of this? There is one that did so, yes. A very brute of a eldritch that has been wandering around the very neighborhood. I want you to go and kill it. Okay, well, that doesn't sound too hard, I guess. It won't be hard. It will be painful, though. Well, I'm already dead, aren't I? You were, but you're back alive, thanks to me. And your fight won't end with death. Not suddenly, at least. There are only but so many times that I can resurrect you back into fighting states. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess first things first, we better get a look at this Eldritch. You'll have to find it first. Any hints? Follow the Trail of Destruction. Right. And we'll start heading down the street, I guess. And you walk down the street, and the street itself starts curving upon itself. Uh, very much like a, a Mobius strip, as it just kind of turns back around. And after about five minutes or so, you find yourself back in the same location of this crater. What? I was just here. You were. But the Eldritch themselves manipulate reality and space as we know it. I think this one is playing with you. Okay, well, I guess I'd better look around here first, then, as Shinji will take a, take a moment to take in his surroundings and see if there's anything else off about the area he's in. It's the same thing as before, just this large crater that has just impacted the entirety of the street. Some of the store faces themselves have kind of collapsed in, uh... The other parts that are very unusual is that people are still walking around as if nothing had happened. They're going into these fallen down buildings. Uh, they're like crossing the street, uh, waiting for cars that are not driving by. And, but the, the big thing that you see is the door floating above. Okay. Um, well, is the door like 
floating up out in space? Like, is there any feasible way that I could try to get up there? There's a couple of ways. Uh, you see that there's, like, a couple of power poles that have kind of, like, just, like, turned over a little bit. Cars are kind of a little bit floating in midair, uh, just to an extent. Uh, some severed limbs are now also in, in kind of floating. It took a little bit for you to see that, uh, but you do see it now that you're kind of focusing in on it. Oh, boy. Okay, well, I might as well... I'm definitely going to avoid the things that are floating unless they're magically going to make me a bridge, so let's try one of the downed power poles. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do our first check here, and this is going to be an ascension check. Uh, you start off at ascension rank one, and so whenever I'm asking for an ascension check, you're going to roll that many d6s. Okay. In this regard, you're going to have one d6 to roll. A roll of one through four will be a success. A five or six will fail. Okay, well, here I go. Good luck. All right, I rolled a three. A three is a success. So the way that it looks is that you're starting to, to run up this uh, power line and starting to doing a couple of jumps between some floating debris. Uh, the debris is holding you well enough. Uh, and as you're starting to ascend up a little bit higher and higher, you notice that you're actually reacting a little bit faster than you normally would have. Uh, just an hour ago, you would not have been able to run up this power pole. Uh, you would not have been able to jump as far as you needed to. But it seems second nature to you. All right. Hey, maybe that thing actually is helping me. Of course I would be helping you. And the key just pulses every so slightly against your chest. You're in my head, aren't you? I'm right next to you. He'll look around. No, no. I'm with you physically, but I am an object near and dear to your heart. Both figuratively and literally in this regard. My... My key? Of course. This is a very precious item to you. And I figured this would be something to encourage you along. You best not have any ulterior motives with my family's secrets. I have no care for secrets in that regard. I only wish to help you. And I wish to help you fight the Eldritch. Alright. Well, let's get this thing over with. As I will... Uh, am I up at the door? Yeah, you're, at, you're right at the door. Alright, uh, I will grab onto the handle and swing it open. And you open up this door, and it leads into a building that did not exist in the other world. This Dumb. building is a very large church uh, with wooden pews all along a giant stained glass window in the back and a large statue that is very thin wiry and a bunch of tentacles extend out from it oh boy well uh shinji's gonna take just a couple steps in um and his eyes are going to lock onto that statue. As you step through the door, the door itself slams shut, and with the sound of the door slamming, the place goes quiet, with the exception of a bunch of prayers. And looking closer again, again, it's one that you have to focus on to see and to notice that there are a bunch of hooded figures within this church, all along the pews. And they are praying, or chanting, something. And the bellwether says, Ah, you have found the Eldritch Church. Quite unfortunate for you. Unfortunate? This, this looks like the lair, if you ask me. 
No, this is only a small part of it. These are people that have been touched by the Eldritch. Ones that are awake, but not yet awakened. Ones that believe futilely that they are able to offer themselves up to the Eldritch for some sort of power. The only thing they are offering themselves up is on a platter. Are they my targets? Do they give that thing strength? No, they feed it. Which... In some regards, is not a bad thing. But if they are proper in their summons, they'll bring the Eldritch here. And right now, you're not quite as powerful as you should be. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't exactly see a way out. So, we better take a look around. And as you start looking around, they pay no attention to you whatsoever. You could walk up to one of them and just start waving your hand in front of their face, and they won't notice. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah, so that's exactly what you do. And, but their prayers are getting louder and louder, and you just feel the sense of unease sitting upon you. I will position myself directly in the center of the church, watching the statue. And you look at the statue, and it is very alien in nature. It is hard to comprehend it. Again, it is a very slender type of humanoid without legs. It's more of a, a amorphous blob at the bottom, but it has tentacles popping out of it. You can't count how many, because the first time you look, you see, oh, it's only got four. And you look back, now it has three. And then you look back, now it has twelve? It's hard to make out, but it changes every time that you look at it. Okay. And this pressure continues to build and build. And the bellwether in your head says, Ah, this is not the Eldritch we are meant to hunt. Interesting. This is someone else's quarry. What, what does that mean for me? It means that if you do not leave, you will be food. Okay, well, you should have said that sooner. Let's get out of here. And I'll run towards the door. Okay. Uh, at which point you're now starting to make it your way through. This is going to be another ascension check. Okay. Well, I shall roll. A five. Okay. So as this pressure keeps going on, you start looking around for a door. The door that you came through doesn't exist. It's not there anymore. And you start looking and, and panicking to an extent, just trying to find this next way out of here. And just as that pressure becomes too much for you to handle, a door is seen. And you start making a break for it. As the ceiling to this church collapses in and a large monster that looks very much like that statue, comes down and starts grabbing all these individuals with tentacles. But did the Eldritch hear the cultist prayers? Doesn't matter. You make your way for the door, and you pull it open and dash through it right as a tentacle starts wrapping right around your body. You slam the door shut. Gain one insight. Oh. Insight is how well you see the world as it is. Okay. Very interesting. So it seems like I've gained a bit of knowledge from 
getting a little spooked. Or a lot of spooked. Uh, very spooked, yeah. <laughs> but as you run through this doorway, you find yourself in an alleyway. And this alleyway is not very large. It leads to a dead end. And there are dumpsters around. Just the occasional bike. Stuff that you would see in a normal Tokyo alleyway. Except at the end of the alleyway, you see a human. But the human is looking directly at you. And not moving otherwise. Man, this place doesn't make any sense. Uh, and as I look at the person at the other side of the alley, I will turn around to see if the door has disappeared or not. The door is there. But it's not a wooden door like it was in the church. It is now a metal door that leads into, like, the back of a restaurant. Very interesting. I will look at the person who is at the end of the alleyway and call out to them. Hey! Uh, what's going on here? And as you call out, you, you know, raise your hand up to your mouth, and it also does the same. And you, you yell to it, and it says something back, but you can't hear it. It's a little quiet. Okay. I am going to do a motion with both of my hands above my head in like a waving motion to see if it copies me. And it copies you exactly. Okay. I will take... A few steps towards it, just until I can, just until it's close enough that I can make out what it looks like. You take a few steps forward, and it also takes a few steps forward. It's definitely shaped like a human, but the face is all wrong. Its eyes are very sunken in, and just shot with a very vibrant purple. Okay. And you get closer, and you see that its mouth is moving. Not at the same time as yours. Although if you say something, it does copy the same movements. But then it goes back to saying the same thing over and over again. I... Mm. If the sounds it's making are audible, I will try and get as close as I can to hear it without getting, like, arm's distance. At which point, I want you to make an insight check. Okay. And I'm assuming I take my insight number, which is currently two, and roll that many d6? Correct. Okay, here we go. Two sixes. And as you start getting a little bit closer, you feel something at the back of your mind. Just a, a primal instinct to say, no, you don't want to get closer. This is a dangerous, like, thing. I will listen and back away. Unfortunately, we are in an alley and I don't see a way out. You start taking a few steps backward and it follows in the form of also taking steps backward. So you start widening the gap between the two of you until eventually you force it out into the street, at which point it disappears. The paw. Yeah, it must have been a ghost or that thing really messing with me. Um, all right, Bellwether, wh wh where to next? I believe that that road is one that you'll want to follow. Okay, whatever you say, I'll hold my rusted crowbar out in front of me and slowly step towards the street. And as you get out into the street, you see 
what looks to be a packed intersection. The four-way crossing just covered in crashed cars, bodies laying around, and another crater as before. This is a different intersection than you were first at. But in the center of it all, staring directly at you, is a massive eldritch in the shape of a lion with wings on its back. And it was already facing you as you turned. And it lets out a roar. One that echoes and reverberates with a bass that does not come from lions. And then it stares you directly in the eyes. And the bellwether says, that is our prey. You want me to fight that? I believe in you, my dear hunter. Oh, okay. Well, here goes nothing, I guess. And at which point we will now move into the hunting phase. Oh boy. The way the hunting phase will work, this is the, the primary part of the game itself. There is going to be a battlefield set up where the Eldritch itself will be in the center. And then around it are six cells, numbered one through six, going clockwise. One being the front of the Eldritch, four being the back. And uh, on your turn, you're going to be able to take three actions. The actions will be either move, and you'll move to an adjacent uh, cell. Either from like one to two or one to six or six to five, you know, you go one spot over. Or you can attack the Eldritch. Uh, when you decide to attack, you'll roll your Ascension dice. And if you roll a one through four, you'll hit. On a one, you'll do a critical and, and deal two points of damage to it. And you'll, you'll break two of the shields on the Eldritch. If you fail with a five or six, then that's it. If you're rolling multiple dice, we take the lowest number. Uh, so if you roll three dice and it's a you know one, three, and then six, uh, the one's your lowest number. So we take the one and you do two points of damage to it. The Eldritch is going to just sit back and let you fight it, though. Uh, it's going to have various actions that it'll take on its turn. After you take your three, it'll take its turn. And if you take certain actions during your turn, it can trigger its reaction. And, and do something back to you. So the goal of the fight is to figure out how this thing fights and try to keep yourself alive. Okay. Uh, like I said at the start of the session, good luck, me. Good luck, you, indeed. So you step into this crater, and it continues to lock eyes with you, not giving its back to you. And it stares you down just with a, a menacing glare. And you won't be able to take the first actions. Shinji, as he slowly creeps into the crater, will clutch that crowbar in his right hand and kind of like spread his stance a little bit. And he is going to look to run uh, to the side. Uh, we're going to run from one to two. As he's running, he's keeping a close eye on the creature, thinking maybe, just maybe, uh, the hind legs will be a, a better target and maybe a weak point. Trigger. Excellent. So the Eldritch will have the ability to react to certain actions that the hunter will take. In this regard, you have caused a condition for a trigger action to activate. At which point... It will now take a quick swipe at you with its right foreleg. And I will be rolling six dice against you. Oh my goodness. Two, three, three, five, six, six. The two will connect and deal one point of damage to you and break one shield. Okay. I have no shield left. So this thing swipes at you and just sends you flying into a car along the side and you feel your body just breaks underneath the force probably your spine has been broken a couple of ribs definitely you feel your heartbeat fade 
fade, fade. And then a large pulse of energy comes from the key. And the bellwether says, You have learned. Good. Now go back and fight, my hunter. You are now Ascension Rank 2, as you have died. And what this means is that now you'll be rolling two dice for any of your actions. And you now have two shields. And with your newfound strength, you stand back up and approach the lion, and it turns to face you. You're back at cell one, and it, if it had taken any damage, has been fully restored. The fight begins anew. And you have the first actions. Okay. Feeling a extremely weird coming off of that car um uh m maybe this thing wants a show of force i'll go ahead and attack i rolled a two and a three so you do one point of damage to the eldritch and it takes one shield damage trigger right and it takes a little bit more than that to break the lion's fangs and it will attack you with three dice. A one, a three, and a four. As you attempt to attack it, it lashes out with a large bite, and it just chews right down into your torso, the fangs piercing into your stomach, into your other organs, and you feel the life drain away from you again. And another large pulse comes out from the key, and the lion spits you back out. You are now Ascension Rank 3. Oh man, this isn't looking good. The fight begins anew. Okay. Maybe the way I chose to go wasn't the right way. So let's attempt this from a different angle, as I run from 1 to 6 instead. You maneuver around, and the lion does not react. Keeping another close eye on this thing, I will move once again, 6 to 5. No reaction. It's time to attack. I will roll 3d6. A 1, a 1, and a 4. The 1 will strike with a critical effect, and you will deal 2 points of damage to the lion. And it does not react to you. However, as you end your turn, trigger. Okay. As the tail lashes out and tries to bat you around, I will roll three dice against you. A one, a three, and a six. You will take two points of damage. Okay, I am left at one. And then it knocks you back into one. Great. It will take its turn. And on the Eldritch's turn, there are several... Conditions that could be met for it to take an action. If none of those conditions are met, it will pass its turn. In this regard, the lion has three actions it could take, but none of the conditions are met. It will pass its turn. It is now your turn again. Okay, so remaining in front of it is safe on its turn, at least for now. Okay, let's try this again. I will move from 1 to 6. No issues. I will attack. Very well. I rolled a 4, a 5, and a 5. That is still one point of damage. Nice. No reaction. 
I will move back to one. It doesn't react. And that was the end of my turn. On its turn, it continues to stare at you, measuring you up. No action. It is your turn. Okay. I will move one to six. I will move six to five. I will move five to four. And that is the end of my turn. Trigger. As the tail lashes back out at you again. For three dice. Two, three, and a six. So it bats you around. And does that last point of damage to your shields. And the tail slams into you again. And just the entire shock of it all just brings you down to your knees. And just casually, it throws a back foot down at you and just claws down on your face. Oh. And you, through immense amounts of pain, pass out. And then a flash of warm energy from the key triggers again. And inside your head, the bellwether says... It does seem to favor its rear a little bit more so. You are now Ascension Rank 4. And the battle begins anew. Okay. Shinji getting back up again this time. His arms are starting to solidify, feeling like bricks when he swings them around. His legs getting there but still a bit more human-like than the rest of his body. Gripping the crowbar with immense force, he's ready to take on the lion once again. Alright. So, to start my turn, I will run from 1 to 6. And I will attack once again. Rolling 4d6. I rolled a 1, 3, 3, and 4. It takes 2 points of damage from the critical. I will attack again from 6. A 1, 3, 3, and 4. It takes 2 more points of damage from the next critical. And that is the end of my turn. The lion, knowing that it has slain you thrice now, continues to stare you up and down. It passes its turn. Okay. I will... I will attack from six. I got a... Two, three, four, and four. One point of damage is applied. Uh, And after slicing in vertically, I will go for the pullback, kind of an overhead from the position I landed with, and attack again. A one, two, five, and six. The two damage is logged as you strike it horizontally. It starts regarding you more seriously now. Okay. And at this time, I will move from six back to one. And as it is regarding you, it is studying you, verifying what it believes to be real. It takes no action. Okay. I will move back from one to six. Okay, if there's nothing there, I will simply attack again. These fights are a puzzle, and you may have just figured it out. This time, a stabbing motion. I rolled a 2, a 5, a 5, and a 6. The damage is logged. Alright. I... mm, I will attack again. See if we can bring this thing down. 
a one, a two, a three, and a three. And you lash in and you hit the lion and it roars out in pain. It's turn. It takes its left claw and swipes at you. But it doesn't look like it's aiming to hit you. Instead, it's moving you into the right spot. You are now moved into cell one. All right. Not the worst thing in the world. Does it have any more actions? That's all it's doing. Okay, well, if it's simply going to move me, I will take reactive action anyway. On my turn, I will move from one to six. And I will attack once again at the same spot. A two, three, five, and five. The Eldritch looks like it is starting to dissolve away into inky blackness, but continues to stare you down. All right. Um, let's see if we can't do some distinct damage on that claw. Hopefully I'll only just get moved on this turn. I will attack for my final action. A one, two, two, five. So you aim at the claw. And the lion itself rears back to pounce at you. So you don't hit the claw, but you hit it directly on the head. And with that little bit of extra strength behind it, the Eldritch itself is hit solidly to the point where it just flashes into a puff of smoke and ink and blood. And the lion is no more. And the bellwether says, my dear hunter, my lovely hunter, my wonderful hunter, you are strong, and I am glad to have been by your side for this victory. But this is only one, a smaller, weaker eldritch. We must go continue to hunt and do more. Well, if that was the first, I, uh, Suppose I could fight another? Indeed. But first, you must rest. You have gone through quite an ordeal. And there are others out there that will be wanting to meet you. And I am happy to introduce you. For you are brave. And you are smart. And kind. And while Shinji is standing in the the puddle of black muck, effectively. Uh, he will take a take a knee and and try to like pick up what whatever the like like run his hand through whatever puddle of stuff he's still standing in. And your hand just kind of seeps through it a little bit, a little bit of transparent cloud, if you will. It's a cloud that you can grab a hold of. It's tangible. And it feels wrong. Uh, I will stand back up and probably get out of it uh, and try to, like, dust myself off. And as you do that, two people just idly walking by on the street turn to look at you and they look to each other and kind of give a quick little laugh and point at you and then they continue on their way as if you are just some random crazy person in the middle of the street i'll watch them as they walk away but put a hand over my chest where the key is and give it a grasp this is but the first step my hunter let us go continue to rid the world of these monstrosities what? Whatever you say. As long as it keeps me alive. And with that, Jake, thank you for playing. This was a blast. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for having me. This was this was great. And if you're interested in anything else about the game, you know, feel free to check out the Kickstarter as it's going online. And uh, if you want to come and meet out with the community, we have the Lion Wing Discord, uh, where we're both on there. 
just come and, and hang out and chat with us and we'll we'll get another hunt going. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Yep. All right. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.